So here's a small Unity project I made, but it is kind of cursed because all of the gameplay code is 100% written in Rust, my favorite programming language. I set out to figure out, is there any chance Unity and Rust can work together? And I found the answer. This is a bad idea. Today I almost exclusively use the Rust programming language to make video games, but I still miss some things from the Unity game engine. It has so many great tools, the editor is phenomenal, but the reason I was willing to jump the Unity ship and use Rust so much these past two years was simply that using Unity and C Sharp I felt like I wasn't growing as a programmer. I felt like I was doing the same thing over and over and the code I wrote started becoming unnecessarily complex. Now I am super happy that I decided to learn Rust because my programming skills have grown so much since then, but I still miss having an editor like Unity. So as an experiment, I wanted to see if it's possible to use Rust and Unity, even though Unity has no support for this programming language at all. This is where my journey started. I came across this video of someone utilizing Rust within Unity to generate meshes. In these 15 minutes he thoroughly explains how it all works and to my surprise the basics are pretty simple. Okay we got this Rust function called getNumber, it returns the number 7. To call this function from C Sharp we need to create a replica of the function, the name, the return type and the arguments needs to be exactly the same in C Sharp as in Rust. Let's see if it works and oh yes it works perfectly. Oh. This was easier than I thought. Okay, let's tell Unity to move a transform from Rust. That should be easy. I made a game object replica in Rust. I made a transform replica. The game objects the are reiterated every update. update. The Their components are first downloaded and at the end they are updated and they have changed. Uh, okay, this is a mess. I was trying to replicate the exact way Unity did things and that just didn't work that well for some reason. I mean, yeah, the code worked. I was able to do this from Rust. The problem I had was this code was really hard to expand on. This first attempt was a complete spaghetti mess. A part of that may be because writing FFI code is very new to me. Anyway, I trashed all of this code to get a clean state, but with the knowledge of this previous attempt. And then I remembered bevy is a thing. If you don't know, Bevy is an entity component based game framework. It is hands down one of the cleanest entity component system libraries I've ever come across. Now, Bevy is a game framework, meaning it has windowing, 3D rendering, 2D rendering. We don't need those things, we're using Unity for that. But luckily Bevy is built in such a modular way that we can extract out specific parts we want to use, aka we only want to use the entity component system from Bevy. I have no idea if Bevy will work well, all I know is I like the entity component system. If we could use that inside Unity, that would be bad, so I had to try it. Something new I wanted to try was to utilize two DLLs instead of one. The code that communicates back and forth between C Sharp and Rust is not very aesthetic. I would prefer if we could hide the code that is gluing everything together from the gameplay code. Now here's where things get interesting. Let's examine how a game object is spawned from Rust into Unity step by step. When the game starts, the player is spawned from Rust. This is how we spawn entities in Bevy. We simply say spawn and any insert call after that will insert the components we're passing in. We got a transform, collision processing, and this is the tag that allows us to differentiate player entities from other entities. Now this prefab component has one thing only, and that is the name of the prefab we want to spawn. Now this prefab name will later be synced into Unity, and Unity can then spawn this prefab. There's one problem though, how does Unity map a string to a prefab? You, you can't do that, not that I'm aware of. My solution was pretty simple. In Unity I have this scriptable object, and I can simply map a string to a prefab. So when Rust tells Unity, hey spawn the prefab called player, this scriptable object will then find the prefab based on the name. If we go back to this spawn function from Rust, this is a part of Bevy, and Bevy doesn't know how to communicate to C Sharp. So when does Rust tell Unity to spawn this prefab? Utilizing systems that are completely hidden to the gameplay programmer, I have made this system that can react when an entity is spawned with a prefab component. This is the part why Bevy is so magical. Here's the code that tells Unity to spawn a prefab. My code is simply stating, I want the entities that contains these specific components under these conditions. 
and Bevy just magically figures out how to provide that to us. Anyway, if Bevy finds a newly created prefab entity, this code will then communicate back to C-sharp with this prefab name. Now there's a lot of confusing string manipulation I'm doing here to be able to pass this Rust string into C-sharp. Uh, it is not very pretty, I know. That's the short explanation how this works. Here is the full explanation, but summarized very quickly. <laughs> How easy was that to follow along? Probably not at all, but it really shows how many hoops I've had to jump through to get this to work. Man. There's so many weird things I've had to do. One example is logging. When dealing with foreign function interfacing, aka communicating between different languages, there's a good chance in producing memory leaks or undefined behavior, resulting in these lovely crashes. Now, I don't think I can debug my Rust code, so I've had to resort to logging. The problem is, when I write print line in Rust, where where does it go? I don't know! So to get my logging messages from Rust into Unity, I added this callback function so we can communicate back and forth doing all of this fancy stuff I showed previously. So this is how we log stuff into Unity. I know it's horrible, the code is so scary. I prefer if we could write log messages something like this. Luckily, the log library exists, and this function we can hide in the implementation. Every time we type info, warn, or error, this will be called hidden away. If that sounds like a duct tape solution, you just wait. <laughs> With all of that done, Runity can now tell Unity to log stuff. But what about game? I had to make two separate logging implementations. The game logger communicates with Runity, the Runity logger communicates with C-sharp. Why? 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 <laughs> oh man. <laughs> this is just some small examples of the really painful programming things I've had to do to get this to work. If you appreciate the effort I've gone through to try to make this a reality, please leave a like and subscribe. Okay, what is it actually like to write a game using Rust and Unity? How I built this backend is totally different how you make a game with this backend. So let's make a tiny game right now. Let's see what it's like to use Runity. La la la, la la la, la la la. Day. Unity demo. Bingo! Here's our starting program, and we all we do is print. It works. So after building it, we then take our DLL file and just drop it into our project. All right, let's add Runity right here. Runity mono, and then the name of the DLL. Runity demo. I don't think we need to assign this right now. Let's just run it. What will happen? Let's ignore that. It works? That is incredible. Okay, let's make the scriptable object also. Runity scriptable prefabs. And let's just assign that. And get away from the error. And it crashed! <laughs> Why? What did I do? As you can see, everything works perfectly. I fixed the crash that the banana and the monkey. I don't do the list of the scriptable objects so we can spawn these prefabs from Rust. We spawn the monkey and banana in Havana. Boom, we have a game. Kind of. Let's spawn some more bananas tapping space. Okay, I actually have no idea what I'm doing, but I don't know. Let's make them move around with uh, gravity. And let's add some monkey movements. And just like that, we have remade Donkey, Donkey Kong with Unity and Rust. Incredible! As you can see, we're just writing regular Bevy code. I really like Bevy's entity component system. Let me just show you some examples on things we can do with this small project we made. Let's say we want the bananas to spawn from the monkey's position. Well, we can query all of the entities with a monkey tag. And from this query, we can get the position of the monkey and spawn the banana from that position. What's cool about this is if we spawn another monkey, well, the banana then spawns from that one too. What if the banana had the monkey controller? We're just adding that component to it and bam, the banana also moves with the user input. Ah, I like Bevy. It's so modular. It's so nice. It's so nice. 
Now I don't think I will expand much on this project. I wanted to see is it possible to use Rust and Unity? Turns out it is, but it is just as hard as I thought it would be. Okay, here is the deal with Runity. Runity has an enormous amount of things that needs to be fixed, if you would ever consider actually making a game with this. Starting with the lackluster features of Runity, there are only 6 features. When I talk about features I mean things like spawning prefabs, destroying prefabs, modifying a transform. But with just these 6 things, I was still able to make a small game with Rust and Unity. Now, if the feature list isn't lackluster enough, here's a list of issues that needs to be addressed with Runity. Sitting down going through the code, I identified 7 issues with the Runity. These needs to be addressed in order to improve the design of the code, but most importantly the performance. I've spent quite a lot of time on this project and I wanna get this video out, which is why I'm releasing it in its current state. The source code is public, if you wanna see how all of this works, go ahead. I don't actually expect anyone to actually try it out, because it isn't that developed. The scope of this project is truly huge. If you enjoy Rust as much as I do, I would recommend sticking with Bevy as it is instead of using Unity and Bevy. Please help the algorithm out by leaving a like, subscribe. We're closing in on 10,000 subscribers and honestly that is insane. Can we reach that before 2022? Yeah, yeah. Let's try it, let's try it. This has been Tendon and I'm out. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, 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 bye.